When the first Batman movie came out in 1989, I was blown away with it. I was obviously anticipating Batman Returns when it came out in 1992. The movie wasn't as good as the original, but I still enjoyed it. As can be expected with any hit film, video game versions were released on a number of consoles, most notably the Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and the Sega Genesis. The Nintendo and Super Nintendo versions were handled by Konami. Well, with Konami handling the Nintendo systems, Sega had to make their own or be left out. Most games that came out on both 16-bit consoles, were mostly the same, but with minor differences. But in this case, both games were completely different. Batman Returns was released by Sega in 1992 on the Sega Genesis. Don't forget if you like these videos hit the thumbs up for your support. Don't forget to subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more future videos. So, how is Batman Returns for the Sega Genesis today? The end result is a game that just looks okay, and is not even a decent platformer. Story The story takes place from the middle of the movie, as it picks up right when the Ice Queen is murdered by the Penguin, and Batman is framed for it. The Super Nintendo version starts at the beginning of the movie, and therefore has the better story. I was disappointed with this one, they could have put a few more levels from the beginning of the movie. Gameplay First thing I will say, is that this game is difficult. Now I don't mind a challenge, but you will find yourself annoyed repeatedly by how many times you die and have to use a continue. This game is a platformer, there are 5 acts in this game, each one of these acts has 4 or so levels. This game is basically a platform game where you play as Batman, and must try to stop the Penguin and the Catwoman. Batman is given 5 weapons, batarangs, smoke bombs, bats, a grappling gun, and homing batarangs. These items are limited to so you need to get more of these. Batman can also punch and kick, and can also use a grappling hook to get up to a few high places. The first few levels aren't that hard, and the level design is somewhat okay at first. Straightforward kinds of jumps with obvious pitfalls you can easily avoid. Once you get to Act 3, the level design starts to get a little more interesting, and a lot harder. Featuring larger pitfalls, more background and foreground areas you can go into. The bosses in this game are very difficult. Catwoman normally is the easiest boss you'll fight because you can pretty much shut her down just by spamming punches, and catching her in animation cycles, or just keep her trapped with bat swarms. Penguin is usually moderately difficult but not impossible, until the end of the game. Now this game is slow. And I mean slow as hell. Batman moves like a slug. This game is so sluggish that you might end up daydreaming before you reach the end of the game. And as I mentioned before, the difficulty of this game is brutal. Graphics Sega decided to neglect the graphics as well. Everything that is meant to be black is purple. Purple. What were the creators thinking? The backgrounds aren't drawn that well, and the sprites of the characters don't look much like their movie counterparts. The exception there would have to be the Penguin. Pity about Batman and Catwoman. The animation is also very sluggish, not too good at all. Sound The sound, well there's not much to say about it, is there? The music is okay, it's not very memorable or catchy. It can be sometimes, creepy, or dark. It's not bad, but at the same time it doesn't stand out that much. You're probably not going to sit there and reminisce about Batman Returns soundtrack for the Sega Genesis. It just doesn't leave that much of an impression on you. It is good enough to set the tone for the game as you play it at least. And the sound effects leave a lot to be desired. The sound effects don't sound bad, but aren't very remarkable either. The sound gets the job done but don't expect it to be groundbreaking. Final Thoughts After the brilliant SNES version, you would think that this version would be just as good. Maybe Konami should have made the Genesis version as well. I'm sorry to say this, but Sega has failed in making an enjoyable Batman Returns game. The music wasn't that good. The graphics are okay at best, just everything is so dark in this game, and it's hard to see what's going on half the time. And the game is brutally hard. Especially the final level. And the final fight with the penguin is almost impossible if you don't have any weapons to use on the penguin. If you must have a Batman Returns game, then get the Super Nintendo version because you're not missing out much here. It's the game itself that is missing a lot. 
This isn't as good as the previous Genesis Batman, in fact, it's really not that good of a game. As a Batman fan, I really wanted to like this one. But I just didn't like it. And I don't recommend it. Batman Returns for the Sega Genesis. Gets a 2. Out of 5. Okay I wanna thank you for watching, and remember to like and subscribe if you like these videos. And what did you think about Batman Begins for the Sega Genesis? Leave comments below. Thanks for watching, and have a great day!